Tommy and Please by Univest here at AM 1440 on this Friday afternoon. As I mentioned earlier in the program, there was uh, dramatic news earlier this week when it was announced that the Pope was going to retire. I didn't even know the Pope could retire, uh, but that made uh, headlines, of course, around the world and certainly among the faithful in this country uh, of some concern, of some note. And uh, what I realized is how little I actually know about the Pope or the workings of that uh, particular position. So uh, we're going to tap into uh, an expert on the subject, an assistant professor of theological studies at Newman University, of course, which is located in Aston, Delaware County, uh, Catholic education in the Franciscan tradition. That's the tagline for Renewman University. So uh, we have an opportunity to talk to Dr. John Crucy during this portion of the program. And, Doctor, thanks so much for your time. Great to be with you, Daryl. I, I appreciate your coming on and, and, and uh, assume that I know absolutely nothing. So <laughs> if the conversation goes along, seems a little elemental to you, I, I apologize. But no problem. In, in, in you know, reading about the, uh, the situation with the Pope, I realized how little I know. Uh, about the whole workings of the deal. So first of all, as somebody who follows this sort of thing, how shocked were you by the news earlier this week? I would have to say I was surprised but not shocked, just because uh, with with the last Pope, John Paul II, there was some talk about the possibility of resignation. So so the the topic was already on the table. So Mm -hmm. when I woke up and heard the news the other day, I was not shocked that didn't really see it coming, though. It was was uh, is the the current pope uh, the the former Cardinal Ratzinger uh, yeah. is he greatly diminished in terms of his 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 physical condition or what what's the situation? He himself says as he advances with age, he doesn't feel that he's physically or perhaps even mentally up to all that the position would demand of him at this point in his life. He's 85 years old, um, and he, he states that he he's stepping aside for the good of the church. Mm-hmm. It, has that not been the case, though, with, with some of the other popes? Obviously, the older they get, the less able they've been able to function. That's true. And uh, the last time a pope resigned was back in the 1400s, so this is not a common occurrence. And I, I guess another factor I see coming into play with all of this is that we, we as humans are living longer now. So mm-hmm. the, the issue is, has become more relevant as our life expectancy has grown longer. Gotcha. Um, and, you know... It just happens to be that Pope Benedict XVI is the first in modern times to, to reach the point where he says, I, I don't feel that I'm, not, I'm at my best to do this right now anymore. Um, although John Paul II looked at that possibility, he looked at that possibility for himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, before we get into who might replace uh, Pope Benedict, let's, let's just talk about the position uh, for what it is. What, what is the role of the Pope? Uh, between the 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 the, uh, the the faithful, between Catholics, individual Catholics, and then what is the role within the bureaucracy of the Catholic Church of the Pope? Well, the, the, the Pope is he's a bishop. He's the bishop of Rome, but as a bishop, he also serves as the head of the Catholic Church. So he is the head of of the body that we call the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. So he's the head of the Catholic faithful, um, and he's also responsible ultimately for the for the bureaucratic running of the church as well. And, and what, as the, the head of the Catholic Church, what, what does he do? What are the, the decisions that he makes that uh, affects individual Catholic uh, followers? Well, uh, ultimately, ultimately the, I, I guess I would say that the buck stops with him. <laughs> ultimately, he has full responsibility for everything, and that could be ranging from issues of, of doctrinal teaching on moral issues to... Um, the way we worship. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 his decisions do have a, a large effect on, on everyday Catholic life. So then, then what are the decisions that Pope Benedict has made that has, has affected Catholics? Well, in our own country recently, we uh, in, English, in the English-speaking world, we've had a new translation of the Mass, for example, that has come out that uh, was issued a year ago. Mm-hmm. That brought about some... Some changes in, in the language that's used in the celebration of the mass. On, on moral issues, the Pope has taken a very traditional, some would even say conservative line on issues of abortion and sexual morality and things like that. Um, issues such as uh, the ordination of women, which the Pope has kept, uh, has reiterated 
the, the, the church's teaching, um, especially as it was emphasized by John Paul II that um, the church cannot ordain women. Mm-hmm. And that, that's brought, you know, some criticism to him. What, what are the kinds of things that, uh, uh, in, in terms of the inner workings of the Vatican and, and the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, what, have there been any changes? Are there any controversies? It, it seems, you know, what do I know about the Catholic Church, but what I read in Dan Brown novels, which right. you know, are probably more misleading than anything else. But are, are there controversies Perhaps, yeah. within the internal workings of the Church? I wouldn't say there's any uh major controversies, Cyril, that are coming to mind right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will happen is the cardinals of the Church, these special advisors that the Pope picks for himself, mm-hmm. they will go to Rome to elect the next Pope. And they'll meet in advance of of the balloting for that. Now, only the, the cardinals who are under the age of 80, which there's, I think there's 117 right now, mm-hmm. um, are able to, to vote for the next Pope. And they'll go into the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican for, for these, these votes. Um, and a, a potential candidate has to receive two-thirds of the vote to be elected Pope, at least in the first round of balloting. And the last Pope, John Paul II, did make an, a, a kind of a change in the way um, the Popes were elected. And that after a number of balloting, or a number of votes, number of ballots that have been taken, mm-hmm. uh, there reaches a point where a potential candidate would only need to receive a majority of the vote. So that was a change. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, if there is some kind of uh, uh, a stalemate of, of a sort, um, eventually they reach a threshold where only, you know, a simple majority is needed to elect the next pope. I have read where Pope Benedict has said that apparently he's going to go into some sort of, uh, con- uh, essentially he is going to leave the world stage, right? That's what he says. Right. Uh, this, you know, this is the first time this has happened in modern history. So right. there are a lot of questions still out there about what's going to be, what's going to happen, how is this going to play out, yeah. even you know what we call him after he resigns as pope. So, we, so what, what if any known. role will he have in the selection of the new pope? Uh, he says none. Mm-hmm. He says none. Um, he, he, so, and so far, he's not commented about anything. Uh, about that, and you know, and some people say, well, the fact that the, the Pope is still alive when a, when a ballot, you know, when the, when the, the next election is going to take, you know, even on a, um, I don't know, just, will, will people be afraid to to offend him by their vote or something like that? Right, right. You know, and and I and then there's other people who say that's ridiculous, um, you know, and uh, that it, it'll have no effect. Now, these it's cardinals, uh, I, I would imagine a, a substantial percentage of them. Uh, have, have they been appo- have they been appointed to their current positions by Pope Benedict? Yes, either either by Benedict or by John Paul II. All mm-hmm. of them have been appointed by those two popes. Okay. And Benedict is very much in the line of John Paul II. Um, so that's, there's a pretty consistent. Uh, I don't know if, if I can use the term stamp on those who mm-hmm. will be electing the next pope. And, and is there any process by which people will? Sort of campaign for the job. I would imagine that uh, if you if you're selected I, to be the pope, there's got to be you know people that want the job. Right. I, I would say that there's you know there's definitely a human element to this whole process. You know, I, I, I believe the Holy Spirit is active and involved in this process, but I also acknowledge a human element to mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of uh, if, if the, the politicking, as it might be called, yeah. Would go on in, you know, as the, as, as the cardinals were gathering in Rome before the election process actually starts, and these uh, cardinals are, you know, meeting in hotels and other places that residences where they're staying. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's there's discussion and dialogue going on about, you know, potential candidates for the papacy. It is the Pope selected from among the cardinals. That's the norm. Right. That's not a requirement. It's not set down in law. The church law is called canon law. It's not required that the next pope be a cardinal. But that's that's the norm. What what are the parameters of of the selection? I mean, it's like you know, presidents have to be thirty five and they have to be U.S. citizens. Is there no, anything like that? Uh, no, no, no age requirement. No, right. you know, nationality. You know, for hundreds of years, the norm was uh, that the pope was normally Italian, and then John Paul II broke 
broke that mold, and, and then Benedict was from Germany. So the question now is kind of, uh, will there be another non-Italian pope, or will we go back to an Italian pope? Will the pope perhaps even come from the, the developing world at this point, as the, the Catholic Church is growing most rapidly in the developing world? At this point, so I, there's, I've there's seen. Talk of that. Yeah, I've 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 heard of the possibility that there could be a black pope. Definitely, definitely possible. The the church, like I said, is uh, you know growing in the biggest numbers in the in the southern hemisphere, mm-hmm. including in Africa, and uh, and and many people would say you know it, it, it's possible, and, and some would even go as far to say it's, it's high time that we have. Uh, a pope from the developing world and, uh, and perhaps from Africa. We're talking with uh, John Crucy, who is uh, at Newman University, where he's an assistant professor of theological studies and a, an expert on the uh, the papacy. Is there are, are there a field of favorite candidates that that are being discussed? You know, I kind of you know obviously been uh, keeping my eye on the news about this, and and you know they're they're, they're talking about a uh, possible. Uh, Canadian Pope or a Pope from Argentina or from Brazil or, like you said, from Africa, mm-hmm. Austria. And I, to be honest with you, Daryl, I mean, your bet's as good as mine at this point. There's, <laughs> you know, there's, no, there's no sure bet. Well, I hope your point. bet's better than mine as much as I am. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, uh, you know uh, I could you know, take a stab in the dark, but uh, it's, 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 it's impossible impossible to know where this is going to lead. At this point. Is there a thought that, that and I, I had heard some reports that indicated there is this thought that uh, that youth is going to play a role, that youth will be served because uh, they want a pope that is going to be in office for a period of time and, and able to function at a high level in terms of energy and that sort of thing. Do you see that as likely? That could be very possible. And there there is some historical precedent when, when a pope has been a pope for a very long time, like John Paul II was pope for like 27 years, that oftentimes the next pope that the cardinal elect is, is an older older man that they know is not going to be pope for so long, kind of a transitional figure. Then and then sometimes after that shorter papacy, will come back and, and choose someone who's younger, um, who might bring that vitality to the office that you mentioned, and who would possibly serve as pope for a longer period of time. What is the uh, the situation, obviously, in this country, and, and I guess elsewhere in, in, in other uh, churches, the, the controversy involving misconduct by priests, the, the, the pedophilia problem? Right. Uh, to, to what extent did Benedict address that issue or not address that issue, and to what extent might that influence who was selected as the next pope? I, you know, I think that's a realistic question. And, you know, I know when Benedict comes, when he came to our own country a few years ago, you know, he made a very public apology to the victims of sexual abuse by clergy and, and spoke of it as the despicable crime that it is. Um, and still the issue, I, I, I think that was a very important step on his part. And yet, like, like you indicated, that issue continues to um, remain uh, within the church and the, the question of how, how bishops in the past and how bishops, bishops in the present are continuing to deal with that issue. So it, it will continue to be an issue uh, that will be faced by the next pope, I believe. Is there some assessment of how that has affected the church? I mean, I, I know Catholics that have essentially left the church, not necessarily left their faith, but left the church because of their unhappiness. They, they, they think it hasn't been addressed aggressively enough. What, what, right, has, I, what has been the impact of that issue? Well, I mean, obviously the first the first impact is on the victims themselves, which the depth of the hurt that has been inflicted there can't even be expressed. But as you also indicated, it has had a, a, a secondary impact on that. It has, has undermined the moral authority of the church among certain people, and it, it has led to a lot of hurt um, to people beyond the actual physical victims themselves. And it, yeah, it has uh, it has alienated a number of people from the church, so there's still a lot of healing that needs to go on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what is the time? I mean, the, the current pope is, in, pope is indicated he's going to what, step down at the end of the month, right? February 28th, I believe, at the end of the month. I, don't quote me on that date. Yeah. yeah I believe at 8 p.m., and there's a date that's at the, uh, the end of the month. So there's no and there's he, no necessity to replace him by the time he retires. It could be something so in that, March, the, right? The consistory, the, when the, call, uh, the cardinals will come together, will be in March, then mm-hmm. it, 
that the forecast is that that they will have elected uh, the next pope sometime before Easter, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, early April there. So, what what is the the formal? You know, I mean, you talked about the the cardinals per, perhaps discussing this wherever they gather, as you would expect they right. would. Uh, is right. is the uh, uh, the the formal process? Does that include? You know, somebody who gets up and makes a nomination of the particular, and then somebody talks in his favor. Is there a, a procedure that's set for that kind of thing? Uh, it's, it's, to the best of my knowledge, knowledge Daryl, um, ballots are taken. I think most of that, uh, where the, the, the individual cardinals were right names down of, of whom they would see mm-hmm. um, as the next, their, their, their candidate. And those, those ballots are submitted individually one at a time. But I think most of... Um, the discussion about who those potential candidates would be would probably occur before that actual vote. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that once, you know, um, there's one round of balloting and perhaps there's no clear, uh, there's no, no one has reached that majority of two-thirds at that point. Mm-hmm. But there's not discussions amongst the cardinals themselves um, about what direction they might want to go. Do they want to look at another candidate? Mm-hmm. Um, there, maybe perhaps there could be a compromise candidate that might be brought up. That would not be a formal discussion where someone would stand up, but that, I, there, there would be talking amongst the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are sequestered. They're not, they're not permitted to have any contact with the outside world during this balloting procedure. Mm-hmm. So they're not talking outside, outside themselves, at least they're not supposed to be. Um, but I'm sure as the, the balloting process is going on, um, history has shown, yes, there is much discussion going on amongst themselves. And what is the signal? Is it puffs of smoke, or how does that White, Yeah, there's a, they, they burn the ballot, um, and if it's a round where, where the, the no uh, candidate, no, no cardinal has reached the two-thirds majority, they put a, a chemical mixture in with the ballot that would make it black smoke. Hmm. And if they have reached the two-thirds majority, We'll put in a chemical that will make it white smoke. How about that? And and, yeah. <laughs> and and is is it a is it a situation where if a cardinal's name gets or yeah a cardinal's name gets put into to nomination or gets put into into the mix, do they then address yeah. the card the the college of cardinals or are they not allowed no, they, to address them? No, they, well, they they can speak. You know, I, I, to my the best of my knowledge, Cheryl, there's no there's no formal presentation by that person. But right. Of course, there'd be dialogue amongst the cardinals themselves. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I, I don't uh, is this written about? Is this? Uh, I mean, these sorts of things. Again, they are done in secret. I understand, but I would. Ima- are, I would imagine some of this stuff comes out, though, at some it point. It does. It yeah. does. It comes out, and there there are histories about papal elections and, and learning about the balloting and such. Mm-hmm. What 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 is the uh, what what do you think history will will find about um, uh, Pope Benedict? What what what? And and again, we're just getting sort of to the end of his term, obviously. Right. But how would you assess his papacy? Well, I think uh, uh, a very holy man, a very strong papacy. Now, he, he came into the papacy as an academic. Mm-hmm. He was a, a theologian, a professor of theology. So he had a, a, a more of an academic approach to issues that the church faces, I guess I could say to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Um, some, some wonder if the next pope might be more pastoral. In approach, having more work dealing with with the people, one might say, uh, uh, you know, in, in the past, perhaps even on a, in a in a parish, perhaps at some point in his life. Um, I guess a very strong academic contribution to the church and helping to unfold much of what uh, John Paul II, his predecessor, had written. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when Benedict became pope, he said, "I see it as my task to explain." What John Paul II said to build mm-hmm. on that, and mm-hmm. that's very much what he did. Um, so I, I would say, uh, in that sense, he left a great legacy with the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it remains to be seen, obviously, which direction the church goes in. And that's and, a big question. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I would guess that that really, from what what I gather from what you're saying about the selection process, is that you know there there may be a, a consensus of thought. In terms of youth, in terms of background, uh, but it, but it really isn't orchestrated to any great extent, right? That's correct. It's got to be more I, organic, I suppose, than that, for yeah, lack of a better yeah, term. And it, 
again, there would be those discussions amongst the Cardinals going on on in probably individual bases. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you brought out before, there's, I mean, all these Cardinals that are going to be electing the next Pope have been appointed by John Paul II or by Benedict XVI himself. So they're coming from a similar mode, um, which many, which some people call a more conservative or traditional mm-hmm. approach to Catholicism. But uh, so that, that the candidate that they ultimately elect will come from that vein of thought. But how they express that and the manner in which they express express that could be very different. Are they very personable, for example, and very open, perhaps more open to dialogue? Um, so the subtleties and uh, with the uh, one difference that we might see in a, a potential candidate. I, I know that church attendance in general across all faiths is is down. Uh, we in this area, of course, have heard a lot about consolidation of of the uh, the archdiocese, uh, archdiocesan tr- uh, schools in the area. So, so my my perception is that attendance is down at Catholic churches. Is that true? I would say it's it, it, attendance is, is down. Now, a lot of the, the closing of schools and such is, is largely a result of migration, of uh, people moving out from the inner city mm-hmm. to the suburbs. So there's actually, you know, there's, occasionally there's a building of a new Catholic high school or new Catholic schools mm-hmm. in more suburban areas, but when there's flight from the, the city centers and such, um, there's, yeah, there, there's, there's a certain vacuum left there where there's all these uh, resources and, and, like, school buildings, um, but there's there's not the the students to fill the seats. And, and of course, uh, there are economic factors that are Definitely. on top, layered on top of that. And, and, and understanding all that, I guess I, what I was getting to was, does the selection of a pope or who is selected as pope can that have an actual impact on the number of people that attend church services in the Catholic faith? I, I would tend to say so, just yeah. so that, because this man is putting a face on the church mm-hmm. in effect, and. I, I, when that person tends, to a certain degree, when that person tends to be more dynamic in nature, that could have an effect on, on, uh, on how a person views the church, mm-hmm. whether that per- mm-hmm. a person feels attracted to the church. But I think, from my perspective, it's going to be a matter of how how this person expresses Catholic teaching and the mm-hmm. way he tries to do that. Can he do that in a pastoral manner that reaches out to people? Mm-hmm. When many people feel feel alienated, mm-hmm. and if he can put a pastoral face on the church's teaching, on the gospel, um, and, 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 and promulgate that in a pastoral way, I think that could be very attractive to to people. Are you fascinated by the whole process? Are you sort of excited about what I, might happen? I, I, I always, I don't know why, but ever since I was a young child, I've mm-hmm. been fascinated by the process and, uh, and by the office itself. Right. So yes. Yeah, It'll be a very interesting month. There, there seems to be, and again, I referenced, you know, the uh, the uh, writing of Dan Brown and and the the novels that he has created. Uh, yeah. to, to me, the, and again, for for lack of of investigation on my own part, but but is there a lot of mystery surrounding the Vatican, its inner workings, and and how things happen there? Well, I, I can't I can't deny there'd be some yeah. some level, you know. Um, uh, if intrigue is the correct word or not, but yeah. it's, it's, I, I like to read Dan novel, Dan Brown's novels for novels, and I recognize <laughs> right. uh, how much liberty and yeah, he has to make these interesting. So mm-hmm. he he spins things in a certain way to 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 make the story compelling when um, the level of intrigue which he tries to describe sometimes is, is far from factual. Yeah, I, I would yeah. guess so. Well, sir, well, yeah. I know that a lot of people. In and out of the faith, we'll be following uh, what happens in the selection of a new pope, and uh, he becomes certainly a figure on the world stage, whether you're a member of the Catholic faith or not. So Definitely. he has some some clout from a uh, you know bully pulpit perspective. When he yeah he's the leader of the largest uh, largest religious body in the world. Yeah, um, and even popes also. While their 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 authority is spiritual, they still even have um, influence, as you were describing, in in, in the political mechanizations of the world. Mm-hmm. And you know, people will talk about John Paul II's involvement in the fall of communism, for example. Mm-hmm. So, well, well, it might not be a direct 
political power. Um, the influence of the papacy still in the 21st century is, is very significant. Well, I know we'll be, and, and when they select a new pope, maybe we can have you back on and, and we'll chat a little bit about the uh, the possible implications of the selection. That'd be great, Daryl. Can we do it? That'd be great. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Uh, Chrissy. I appreciate the time. And Thank you. Uh, we'll follow the story and, and we'll talk to you before too long. Sounds good. Thank All right. I appreciate it. Dr. John Chrissy joining us from uh, Newman University, and uh, he is a papal expert, uh, bringing his uh, expertise to the program today. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. And uh, we are going to continue on Comment Please by Univest in the moments ahead here at AM 1440.